How you doing, Steve Noble, Noble Moto? Um, so what I'm doing today is upgrading my saddlebags. I bought these OGO, well, Dianese OGO saddlebags last winter, and I've had some other soft saddlebags on it, and uh, they're they're quality products, but I just came to the conclusion I just need hard bags, traveling, waterproofness, locking, weight, um, you know, weight of stuff that you can put in them. So I went online and I bought Viking bags. I don't know what model these are. They didn't send them to me either. Like, I had to pay full price for them. Like, you know, I have to do most stuff. Uh, but just wanted to clarify that I'm not, you know, uh, not getting paid off by them or anything. Not that I would take payoffs to lie to you guys, but yeah. So, anyway, so I'm going to do an install video on these things and uh, I'll give you a review of them as we go here. So far, they seem like a pretty quality product. Uh, let you know as we go. So, let's get to it. I got saddlebag struts here, so I'm going to pull the bolts off here. Remember, as you do this, your backrest mount's going to come loose, your fender's going to come loose, so we're only going to do one side at a time. And then we're going to run through this on the step-by-step uh, -step directions that uh, Viking Bag sent us. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, cut the back mounts here, based on the instructions. Got our long tube, short tube. Okay, and all this off their instructions. So we're gonna slide that in there. Instructions are okay. Lots of pictures, words. I mean, it kind of explains it. It's also a universal fit, so you know, can't pull them to the fire and expect it. Every little detail spelled out. bolt is entirely too long but we'll get to that later. I want to make sure you use the right length bolts otherwise they're gonna hit your tire in here when your suspension presses but for the time being we're just gonna let those hang off of there. We'll probably end up slant, slanting them back a little bit. Not sure how we're gonna sort that out. We will use the two mounting bolts and the little strut bar for the inside here. So this flat plate here goes on the inside of the bags. It has a little strengthening bar. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna finger tight that sucker down in there. This will give us a chance to make sure it clears our pulley and everything too. Make sure nothing weird's going on there. All right, so we can finger tighten that stuff down there. That's a good triangulation going. Push bolts up. We'll have good clearance back here with the pulley when the suspension compresses. Everything looks pretty pretty kosher right there. Um, it's all kind of lined up in place. Let me find a marker that works. Yay. And what we're going to do, ever so carefully, we're going to take the bags. It's got a shot cut out right there. Ain't that cool? We're going to see, I guess they can't go that far forward, can they? And we're going to see where it looks good here. Make sure, remember, where the top of your uh, hinge is here, where the, your cell bag's open, so you need to have the amounts down in here somewhere. And we're going to line that up with the bike, and if you got a friend to help you with this, it'd probably help out great. My wife will be home soon, so I'll have her give me a hand with it. We're going to go with, my wife gets home, we'll check this mounting. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little circle around it there. And man, I don't like that. So we got one little circle in the back here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to drill this hole in the back here. We'll put the bolt through there. Then you know, at least slide through there and then it'll be easier to mark the front bolt. But then I'll have one, and I'll be able to level it off of that. So we'll go with that. All right, so we've got one mark back here. Put a little circle drawn on here with a magic marker. I'm going to make a little X on the eyeball, and we'll get a little better idea of the center. So 
like I said, we're just doing one hole. It says use a quarter inch bit. We got a quarter inch bit right there. So we're going to use that. Also, I have it sitting on a piece of blank, a blanket here um, so you can see what's going on and so I don't scratch it. Mmm, there we go. You know, work it through a little bit, make sure the fabric and everything on the inside. All right. Got to take the seat off there. It'll be a little easier to mark the location with it. So here we get straight. Make sure it looks straight to the bike. Level isn't nearly as important as straight to the bike. That's a really count. marked. Set it on back down there. Like before, got the hole marked right here. Got the center of the hole marked. So we're going to start out slow, make sure the drill doesn't walk. <laughs> Alright, so we've got our strut here, so we're going to take our flat washer, then we're going to almost drop our bolt. And we're going to take our little quarter inch bolt here. We're going to slide it through there. So we've got the big old washer on the big flat surface there. We're dropping the saddlebags. Big old washer on the flat surface there. Big old fender washer on it. And we're going to put that inside the bag. And we're going to thread that through the little hole down here. The quarter inch hole that I just drilled. You can see it protruding out right here. Now these cool little nuts that they gave us, the little female thread and the big Phillips screwdriver in the end. We're going to take that and we'll slide that through the back of the saddlebag strut here. And then we will thread that on there. When we do that, man, that's a pretty solid setup. Now we're just going to go finger tight on that. Get another fender washer. Fender washer, four inch hole, bolt. Put that through the backing plate inside here. Then went also through the tiny little quarter inch hole. Don't drop a saddle bag in the process. That. The specialty nut. Saddle bag strut over top of it. Thread that onto your small little nut right there. Ah, right, so. It's a 10 millimeter wrench, flathead screwdriver. Tighten this sucker up really good. Now you don't want to kill it, but you want to make sure things pretty tight. It's going on Harley. You may have noticed Harley shake. And your stuff's in here, so you don't want to lose it. And probably uh, after this is mounted on here for a while, I'll probably come back and give them all a pull again and make sure they're all still solid. All right. There you have that. So your struts are mounted on the back here. I think you can see that. Struts are mounted on the back here. It's all good and solid. Once I bowl up to the bike, it should be good and solid up there, too. Four. All right, so... Since I had some shock clearance issues here too, we're going to take these little spacers right here, the longer the spacers they sent me, slide those on there, slide those on this one back here. Alright, tell this bolt's probably going to need to be cut down. This one's going to be close. We'll see what happens. And we're going to take that, slide it into our fender strut right there. All right, so I got this slit in here, and as you can see, even with up against the spacers here, I think you can see that. It's still just barely clear on the shock. So, 
think that means we're going to have to use the second spacer on there too. You don't want to use any more spacers than you have to because it's just torsional load on the bolts. But they did give us also the skinny spacers. So you had that in there. That's probably going to be about good. Alright. So I currently have the longest 3 8 bolt in here that came with the kit. The two spacers and everything else that goes with it. I'm going to put the nuts on the back side here. And uh, with the tire on, this obvious often requires some long fingers. But it can be done. Woo. Maybe from a different angle. Some people probably recommend jacking the bike up and laying the tire drop some more. Matter of fact, I think it's what we're going to do. Hey. Alright. So we've got the bolts going through here. Might be 3 8 might be 10 millimeter. Actually, I have to put calipers to them. Either way, our 15 millimeter wrench here. Our gear wrench up inside here. It's actually not going to fit, so we're going to have to use the open end. We're going to tighten this down. But, so we got the longest bolts they have here. They came with the kit in here. And all the spacers. So it means we're probably not going to have enough bolts for the other side because those ones are going to be too short. So, trip to the hardware store. Alright, and this back bolt up back here. They're essentially mounted. Still got to trim down the lengths of the bolts here. It's going to rub on the tire. Let's take a look at that. I gotta admit, that's pretty fucking solid. I am impressed. So a little hardware difficulties. Eh. It's a pretty solid bag. Looks pretty good too. Check it out. Hmm. It's not bad. All right, here's the final part of the review. Uh, they've been on here for a few hundred miles now. Um, seem to be pretty solid bags. No vibration. Everything still seems to be tight on them. Locks are pretty solid. Hinges are solid. Everything looks good. No real complaints here. Uh, the one thing I did do, uh, I ended up getting some longer spacers from uh, McMaster Car. Uh, that way it'd just be one piece, and then I end up getting uh, stainless steel bolts uh, that were the absolute exact length that I needed. Can't see it went up in there. No longer, no shorter. That way they don't stick out past the nut uh, up underneath here, and uh, there's no risk of them rubbing on the tire. Other than that, man, it's a pretty solid product. Pretty happy with it. Um, yeah. It is clear in the shock down there, very low, sits, sits tight to it. Uh, that little scuff mark there is from me, not them. Uh, yeah, pretty good looking putt, pretty good looking uh, bag there. Uh, pretty happy with it. Uh, that's all I got.